issue with uh, Calvin, if you don't mind. Huh? <laughs> Uh, you have to take and, turns. <laughs> and I'm sure Calvin doesn't mind too. Yeah? Uh, he talked about checks and balances, and he only concentrated on checks and balances in Parliament. I think there's checks and balances that should be outside Parliament. And we don't have it. We don't have it. Because all the checks and balances, traditional checks and balances outside Parliament, media, academia, think tanks, we all know who controls them. Uh, civil society is still very, still very new, right? So I think that is a very important point. I mean, a very important factor in Singapore's check and balance, you know. And uh, you talked about uh, Workers' Party, and I think uh, Eugene uh, uh, responded to that. But I just want to say one more thing about the Workers' Party. I think if I read them correctly, if I read Lao Tia Kang's strategy correctly, he is not interested in debating you in Parliament. I got seven people, is it seven? Seven MPs. I got 80 MPs on the other side. I say something, all of them will come and, and surround me, and I'm dead, right? And do I want to appear like that? First point. Eh? Second point is, I don't have the kind of information that the PAP has. I can't get a lot of information. We don't have a Freedom of Information Act. And when Lawrence Wong stood up in Parliament a few months ago, and I think he was asked about this, and he said, oh, we can't have that. I'm paraphrasing me, him here. We can't have that because then the civil servants will be very frightened to write policy papers in depth because they will be exposed or they may be challenged, you know. I, I thought that was a very, very strange answer. You know? <laughs> Extremely strange answer in modern times. Uh, coming to... Uh, uh, I, I felt very, sitting here very discriminated against, you know, because everybody was talking about young voters. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody has this assumption that the older voters will vote PAP. I think the ground is shifting. And I think it's shifting in a big way. You know, I don't have, I'm talking from anecdotal evidence. IPS survey in 2011 showed that the older <laughs> voters are becoming a, a big group of swing voters. And why is that so? Because I think the older people are feeling very disgruntled. Hmm? There's no reason for me to feel disgruntled, but I still feel disgruntled. Yeah? <laughs> I still feel. Why? Because, one, I, retire, I, I have to leave my job by 62. Or if you are lucky, you have a good boss in front of, uh, uh, who likes you, maybe 65. We still haven't moved the employment uh, retirement age. I don't understand why. I thought this government had all the powers to do what it wanted. So, and longevity is now about 85. So I got 20 years you know, to live. And I'm doing nothing. What do I do? I got time to think, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Very dangerous in Singapore if you got time to think. <laughs> so I think that group, you know, is going to don't be a big group. I think don't underestimate them. And finally, one other point, and that is, uh, people were talk uh, I think the, uh, the audience was uh, mentioning about how to get politicians, you know, how to get to know the politicians better, right? I think it's more or less impossible. Huh? But I think we are now at 50 year point. The next uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 years is going to be very important for us. I would like to have a debate. Uh, no, no, I don't like to have a big. You can organize one where you ask the politician from both sides, huh? from both sides, what is that one big idea they have that will take us to the next 50 years? I don't want this same old answer about what, what I mean, economy is going through a, a major distress, right? What, are, what ideas do they have about economy, right? What ideas do they have about the transport problem? What ideas do they have about housing? It must be an idea that will... Transformational. That, that is transformational, yeah. exactly. You know? And that's where I think, I mean, leave aside the character, because there's no way I can assess that person's character. But that idea that he's going to give will then tell me whether he is a fit to be a minister or, or, or prime minister. Or even, or even whether you want to or vote even, for him. Yeah. Fourth, uh, finally, 
I think this election. Quite a few finally. Uh, <laughs> see, it, it just keep coming, la. <laughs> The bad habit from Calvin. <laughs> On a roll. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't prompt you. Uh, <laughs> no, you started. La. You started yes. the ball rolling, uh, and this is a really a finally, finally point. I think it's leadership. Right. Uh, I'm not a, a, a hundred percent fan of uh, Lee Kuan Yew, but I think he has done quite a lot of good things. I have, I'm one of those who benefited from his system. I think we in Singapore we really need, or we are lacking decisive leadership. I think we need, whether it's the Prime Minister or the person who's going to take over from him to show that, dis that decisive leadership. I'm not sure the nine days period is enough, but, and that is what we're going, is going to take the country forward. And I don't see that, and I didn't see, and I've not seen that in the last few years. So, That's it. 